people ask me, what's the biggest threat to America? And I say, I, I would argue that geopolitically, and I may even be just parroting your words here, that we've, it's hard to imagine a time when we were stronger, we're food independent, relatively speaking, we're food independent, we're energy independent, no one's lining up for Chinese or Russian vaccines, smartest, brightest people in the world all still want to come here. Um, we have an economy right now that is growing again. Our inflation is bad, but it's less bad than anywhere else in the world. It's like, if you want to talk about what's bad about America, I think you have to show up with, well, where, where would you rather be? In China, where the equivalent of the Dow has been cut in half? In Europe, which is, has low growth? And I mean, where, where, who exactly is doing half as well as we are? Or who's doing less bad than we are right now? And but the problem is the horror movie, if America is a horror movie, the call is coming from inside of the house. I was very discouraged watching the State of the Union, just how angry we are at each other. These are people who are elected representatives, all Americans, many of them similar backgrounds, all doing the same job. They work together. They live close to each other. They go to cocktail parties with each other and they scream at each other in the middle of a in the middle of a meeting. It just. It just shocks me the lack of camaraderie, the lack of patriotism, the lack of connective tissue. You know, we're we're rotting from the inside out uh, externally. I don't think we've ever I would argue we've never been this strong, but we're tearing each other apart from the inside. And I do think social media and media's uh, cycle time that leads to catastrophizing everything gives us the sense that things are much worse than they are. And it's it's not another nation's fault. It's your neighbor's fault. So what do you think um, the uh, beginnings of any solution might be? Because the social media companies are clearly not self-regulating in a direction uh, that would lead to resolving this problem. Well, I'm a fan of antitrust. I think if you had more competition that eventually a social media company would raise their hand and say, we're going to age gate at 16. There's no reason to have kids on social media that we're going to um, be much more, much more um, stringent about misinformation. And we're going to stop pretending and using the First Amendment as some sort of blanket coverage to not do anything. And we're going to uh, fact check things just as traditional media companies do. Uh, but also, I don't think this gets a lot better until someone, a, a key executive at a big tech company is criminally charged and walked off. Um, I just don't think they, we can't come up with fines that are big enough. So the algebra of deterrence here is just not in place. And then on a broader level from a national scale, I think we need na mandatory national service. I think we need to get young people in the same uniform again so they see each other as Americans, not as people of different sexual orientations or different uh, political parties. I think we need more third places so people can get together, young people can get together and establish mentorships, establish romantic relationships, learn, you know, uh, uh, the fundamental element of any society is relationships. And we aren't building enough of them because people are in their homes or on their devices. So a massive investment in young people that makes them more optimistic about the future, shared collective experiences in the service of our nation, and holding our media complex, specifically social media, more accountable for the damage they're doing. So is, is it fair to say, I mean, that both um, the positive developments that we're seeing in the United States in terms of its geopolitical, its economic strength, um, are being driven, will be driven very strongly by uh, new changes in AI, but also all of the negative things that you just suggested that are deep problems inside the United States, especially when we talk about relationships between people, that's also one of the biggest challenges that will be exacerbated by the rollout of these new AI tools. Anytime you take one source or material or a piece of information and you convert it into something that is more valuable, whether it's petroleum, whether it's oil into petroleum, whether it's attention into ads, there's emissions and externalities. And we decided to regulate the emissions around carbon emissions. I mean, we might've been a little bit late, it might not go as far as we should, but we have, we have emission standards. We have an act to try and reduce carbon. Um, when we have translated attention to Nissan ads, it's created, um, a very negative externality, and that is key people's attention. I mean, think about the cadence of news. If we could only have one headline news story the last century, it probably, I would bet, would be the West turns back tyranny. If we had to pick one headline for the last 100 years, if we had to pick one headline for the last 50 years, I would argue it would be 
unprecedented historic prosperity led by China and the U.S. You'd have to, I would think you would have to have positive headlines, but because we have a headline every every three seconds to try and maintain our attention, we go to catastrophizing because that's what keeps our attention. But we aren't. We don't seem to have, want to have the same type of regulation or standards to control or recognize these emissions. I'm an ageist. I think I don't know about you. I have a diffi- more difficult time wrapping my head around technology uh, as I get older, and every year we continue to have the oldest elected representative body of almost any democracy. The average age of our elected representatives is 62. So for, I mean, how many 62-year-olds? So that means for every 40-year-old we have, we have an 84-year-old. At one point, I think a third of all elected representatives had someone on their staff print out their emails. So are, are these the people to really be figuring out the legislation and the regulation for technology. We're, we're really, we have a real dearth of domain expertise around the people who need to figure out the laws here.